Good morning, everybody. Garrett Rosendahl with Garrett Precision LLC and American Metalworker YouTube channel. Today we are heading out in the work truck to go add a secondary rail to an existing fence. Um, horses are pushing up against the no climb wire and the customer wanted to add a second rail. This fence is uh, probably 15 or 20 years old. Uh, and it's used some smaller diameter pipe, but um, was able to match it. And I've already started, I've got 160 foot of it with two rail fully welded already. And we've got another 20, we've got another 160 foot to go. So here is the arena. So you can see that side over there and that side there does not have the two rail. I already added it here. See, we gotta add this section. It just didn't quite fit right. So I'm gonna redo that one. We did these ones. It looks a little goofy here because of a bend in the fence. So in order to make it look consistent, we had to, had to follow it. But that is what we're doing. So I'm gonna get the truck set up and show you how we're gonna fit this pipe because all of those ones, and I don't think you can see them, are already trimmed and on the ground. So I'm gonna use this pipe as an example. You just saw me take the measurement over there. I measured from inside of the post to inside of the post. So bottom of the cope to bottom of the cope. And what I measured over there was 95 inches. So in order to cut this pipe to make sure I can cope both ends and we get a tight fit, I've got to add this distance right here from the bottom of the cope to the top of the cope times two because there's two ends here. So I've got a guide that I mark these out with and I know that the top of this to the bottom of this is five eighths of an inch. So I'm gonna take that 95 inch dimension, which is from the bottom of this cope to the bottom of that cope, but for that fence section that I just measured, and I'm gonna add one and a quarter inches. So the 95 inch section is gonna be cut to 96 and a quarter inches and then I can coat both ends and it's gonna be a tight fit. All right, so I'm gonna take the portable bandsaw. I'm gonna cut at that mark flat. I'm gonna cut it flat and then I'll show you what to do with the copes to make that a perfect fit over there. All right, now I'm gonna use my guide on both ends here. The trick is coming up with a reference point to make sure you can line this guide up the same on both sides. If it's oriented this way over here, but oriented that way on the other side, it's not gonna fit right and you're gonna have massive gaps to fill or it's just not gonna go in at all. So fortunately with this pipe and a lot of the pipe I use, you can see this welded seam right here. Um, so, I'll actually use that, that seam to line up the hinge with. I'll do that on both sides and that'll give me a, a perfect indexing and it'll make it a good fit. All right, if the welding helmet's any indicator, uh, I've started welding some of the top rail. I'm not gonna skip all the other steps. They're coming, but I wanted to take an opportunity to explain what happens or the consequences of not getting that cope indexed correctly on both ends. So as you can see, on this side, we have a really great fit. Just really great. Both of these are just fitting really good. And you go over here, and it becomes pretty obvious that this cope is rotated. So if you're standing this way, it's rotated counterclockwise. I didn't index it correctly. And so now I've got a whole lot more gap to fill right here. So still make it look really nice. It's okay, it just takes longer. It's a time thing. I mean, Stevie Wonder could weld these seams, but this one takes a little bit of time, maybe a little bit of stitch welding uh, with this thin wall material. So just wanted to go over the consequences real quick of not indexing that cope or the coping guide correctly. So we'll get back to cutting that pipe down. All 
All right, now that both ends are marked, I'm actually gonna take the portable bandsaw. I'm gonna cut it at an angle, and it's actually gonna follow this line and give us a real clean cut. No torches or anything like that. Just a bandsaw, and it's gonna, gonna turn out really good looking and really tight fit. So we've got our post cut, just a quick refresher. We measured in between both posts, inside to inside, took that dimension, added one and a quarter inches because we needed to compensate for a cope on each end. And the distance from the bottom of the cope to the top of the cope is 5 eighths of an inch or 0.625. So we cut this at 96 and a quarter inches for the 95 inch opening. We used the coping guide, marked it using an index point on the pipe itself so that both are clocked correctly. And now we're gonna hammer these into place, or this one. This should be a pretty darn tight fit. Uh, it should hold itself in place when we're done with it and then we'll be able to weld it. So let's get this in place. All right, got this one in place. As you can see, the fit here as tight as ever so the dimension that I'm shooting for is from the bottom of the top rail to the top of the second rail is 25 inches I've got that on each side that is what the rest of the fence or the rest of the second rail has been built to so I'm gonna weld this in place and uh, we'll keep on moving guys get too far here's a couple considerations if your fitment is too tight if you're hammering this in here and you're just having to beat the tar out of it to the point where you're getting deformation in the pipe um, you get to that point and you're typically going to start getting bowing in your posts and in real bad scenarios it can actually uh, it can actually induce bowing or deformation in your top rail. So that's consideration number one. Consideration number two is in the video earlier, I cited 0.65 or 5 eighths inch from peak of the cope to the bottom. That is gonna change with the diameter of your pipe. So if you're building a fence out of two and three eighths material, then that changes. That's it's more like three quarters of an inch. And you go up to two and seven eighths and you're pushing one inch from top to bottom of that cope. So make sure you measure and you understand what the distance is for the cope from top to bottom for your diameter pipe. And then the final consideration is, this is an existing fence. I don't know how old it is, but it's old. And you can see that a horse is, is laid down on top of this top rail or something like that. So what I'm gonna do to make sure that this top rail doesn't, or the secondary rail doesn't look goofy like this top rail, is I'm actually gonna go over here start this one and then I'm gonna come back to this one because I already have a good one in place there obviously not welded but but in place and then I'll put this second rail with the ends matching this one and this one both of which are undamaged sections all right so we fit up most of the second rail on the arena here I uh, got the welder pulled out we're running the Miller Thunderbolt 160 today. We're burning 332nd, 6011 at 70 amps to start with. Um, probably fine tune it along the way. And we're gonna weld the whole inside and then hop on the outside and weld the outside of the arena. 
then call it a day for this project. So we'll do a little time lapse of that. Hey everybody, thank you for spending the time to watch this video. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comment section below. If you haven't subscribed to this YouTube channel, please consider doing so. And if you liked this video or it was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And stay tuned for more content on the way. This is the American Metalworker YouTube channel, and we will see you soon.